Now, for those of you that have watched my videos for years, that have followed me on social media, it shouldn't surprise you. I'm a big, 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 big fan of Jade Cargill. For those of you that are maybe less familiar, I suggest maybe do your little bit of research, look at Jade, and then think about my history. Back to Jade, back to me, back to Jade, back to me. You should get the deal at this point. But obviously, there had been a lot of rumors and conjecture and everything else about what Jade Cargill was going to do after her AEW deal reportedly expired. Was she going to re-sign with AEW, the place that had given her a platform for the past three years, or was she going to go to WWE? Was she going to go to NXT or go to Raw or SmackDown or whatever the case might be? And seeing the discourse about this over the past week or so has been pretty interesting. Um, and I wanted to talk about this a little bit because it fascinates me. First, this is business. Do fans understand this? Like, this is business. And as part of business, it's about making money. It's not about putting on the best match. It's about making yourself as much money as you can while you can. Because no matter how great or talented a performer or wrestler somebody is, as beautiful of a goddess as a Jade Cargill is, it is all fleeting. Everyone is on borrowed time. So you got to get in where you can fit in when the hell you can. It's business. And that's part of the great thing, right? About having two major North American wrestling promotions in WWE and AEW. Is it allows some of these talents, especially when they've gotten themselves into a spot where they can have it, leverage. Leverage is what makes the world go round. Leverage is what it's all about. And when you can potentially pit two sides against each other, that's when it's going to be a big time payoff and a big time win for you. So Jade Cargill, who initially was trying to get in several years back into NXT and get into the WWE system, now she's in a place where a few years in AEW, she decides she wants to go elsewhere. You've got fans kind of turning on her a little bit and begrudging it. And you know, you got, you got the fans whining about tribalism and all that stupid shit. But here's the reality. Like she had gotten to a place in AEW where she did about all that she could really do, right? Like she was the TBS champion for over 500 days. What more are you going to do with her? Like she was kind of hot shotted into a big spot and in my opinion should have been because she has special characteristics. She has special qualities, star power, namely, you know, that separates her from the others. You can't treat her like a ham and egger. You can't treat Jade Cargill like she's developing and you got to work her way up and pay her dues. No, F that. She ain't that type of chick, man. You got to be able to read the tally. You got to be able to read the room. However, what comes with that sometimes is that after a while, those acts, if you're not careful, can stagnate. They can provide diminishing value, diminishing return for all involved. And you get to a place where you're kind of stuck in, in turmoil or like just kind of spinning your wheels, right? And we see this happen with a lot of WWE talents where they stay for too long and they just be kind of come run of the mill and forgotten about. And there's only so much you could do with them there. So to me, my opinion, I frankly wish the talent jumping back and forth was able to happen a little bit more because I think it's better for everybody involved. It's better for the promotions because Jade's been at AEW for several years now. If she goes away for a few years and she ever comes back, like it's going to be a really big deal. How could we miss you if you never go the hell away? But now she could come to WWE and the presentation is different. 
The audience is different. The product is different. The talent that she could work with is different. Like when I look at Jade Cargill and AEW again, there's only so much more you could really do with her and it was going to be a diminishing value of return. Meanwhile, I could take her to WWE right now and I'm sending her straight at Charlotte Flair and I'm jobbing Charlotte's ass the fuck out in a hurry. Jay needs to squash her ass. Like you got to smash the Jade Cargill over. You did all this shit, like you're showing, you know, clips of her, showing USA Today, running stories about her. If you're going to make her that bad bitch, then you got to make her that bad bitch from day one. And this has got to be pointing towards her and Bianca in a featured match at WrestleMania. It's got to be something. If you're going to do it, you got to do it in a big, big, big way. But just when you think about Jade coming here, like, there's also a place for WWE, especially under Triple H, where they like to tell these stories. You know what I mean? They don't always do it well, but, you know, you could talk about, she's a mother. You know, she's got a master's degree in child psychology. She's married to a former MLB All-Star, Brandon Phillips. Like, she's a fitness model. You know, her inspirations are China. Well, WWE won't fucking mention. And Storm. And she likes to cosplay as Storm and all this other shit, right? So, I feel like in the presentation, in the, in the intermediate, they could do more for her. And certainly, I, I have no doubt that Jade Cargill looked at this and said, I could make more money in WWE. I've made it to where I've always wanted to go. Furthermore, I could get out there on even larger platforms. I can get out there and establish the Jade Cargill brand, which by the way, she gets to use her real name. Shows how much the business has changed for Vincent Hunter in WWE compared to a decade ago. They would have sat there and brought her in as something like Cade Jargill or some shit like that. Just so that way they could own the rights to her name. At least she will get to be Jade Cargill. And this will be a way for her to be able to get into TV. Into movies. And, you know, when we think about wrestling, wrestling fans love to think about wrestling and how great it is and why would anybody ever want to leave it. But the reality is, you got to embrace a new reality, and that is that this shit is a gateway. And if we were more open to embracing it as being a gateway, you would get more top-tier great talent, future star talent, to come through professional wrestling as a gateway. Like if Jade takes two to three years at WWE and then she's like, hey, I'm getting some interest from Hollywood. I'm going to fucking go do Hollywood. More power to her. If it elevates her brand and she goes off and wants to do more fitness model stuff and make a shit ton of money doing that, even though she really doesn't need the money because, again, she's married to Brandon Phillips who made a ton of money in his career, then so fucking be it. And if she does really love the wrestling thing and wants to keep doing it, and she says, hey, I want to go back to AEW. She can fucking do that. But this whole thing of whining about how dare she turn her back on AEW. You wouldn't turn in her back. It's business. To those saying, well, AEW did a terrible job by her. Eh, they weren't perfect by her. But they took somebody that had very, 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 very minimal experience. And in her first feature program, she was associated with Cody Rhodes, one of the EVPs, and oh, by the way, Shaquille fucking O'Neal. Treat me like shit like that if I'm a new up-and-coming wrestler. Holy hell. They put the TBS championship on her and made her the champion for almost a year and a half. They weren't perfect in the way they fully presented and featured here all the time. But they did a pretty damn good job overall. They gave her a platform. They gave her a massive opportunity. And she did what she did with it. Like, Jade felt like a big fucking deal. Jade felt like a difference maker. Jade took advantage of that opportunity, and that's what life's about, right? Take advantage of the opportunities and do better for yourself. So to sit there and criticize Tony Khan and AEW, they gave her this opportunity, and they gave her a lot of opportunity. To criticize Jade for this, it's not like she went out like a petulant brat on the way out. She's putting people over. Seems to have conducted herself in a decent manner. Like, it's just business, folks. That's why so many people, you wonder how they're successful in life when you see what they complain about in wrestling. Jay Cargill went somewhere else. She wanted to change the scenery. She wanted more money, different, better opportunities. Good for her. Everybody in life should be able to get that. I don't begrudge her for it at all. 
I can't wait to see what she does in WWE because, man, the possibilities are intriguing.